So one of the most popular videos in the early days of this channel was looking at some of the most hated watch brands on the market. As humans, we tend to like the negative, don't we? So I wanted to follow up to that video and take a look at four more luxury watch brands or watch brands more towards the luxury segment that often also get a lot of hate. Now, the whole point of this video is not to just dunk on brands, but more of just to actually take a step back and look at maybe why these brands get some hate and maybe we can better understand the human behavior of why people feel certain ways. What do brands uh, play in that conversation? I think this is just a helpful exercise when it comes to really looking down to the objective realities of why hate is maybe going towards some of these brands way. So as a primer for the idea of luxury watch brands, definitely check out our 50 best luxury watch brands on the market and in the industry. The whole point of that article is to be a jumping off point so that you have have better information about all the different luxury brands in the industry, or at least a good uh, assortment of them. In that article, we have a breakdown of some of the key models of each of these brands, some of the history, their ownership structure, and also some hidden facts and details. Like, do you know that the Vatican in Rome has the most Atmos clocks on hand of any place on the planet? So definitely check it out. Link in the description will be down below. So now for our first brand on this list, we have Hugh Blow. So Hublot is sort of a new kid on the block when it comes to the industry. Started in 1980, Hublot is French for porthole, and the brand was definitely not huge until Jean-Claude Biver took over in 2004 after revitalizing Blanc Pan and also, of course, Omega during the 1990s. Now, the brand started its new direction with a big bang, with quite literally a big bang, with the release of that watch in 2005. The big bang, I would say for many, is the watch that they will think of first when considering Hublot in their positioning and ultimately led to their acquisition by LVMH in 2008. And even with the hate going towards Hublot's direction, they certainly still sell pretty well. They're 12th in the Swiss watch uh, brand rankings in terms of total turnover ahead of brands such as JLC, Vacheron, Tudor, just to name a few. But now why is Hublot hated? So answering that question, I wanted to try to answer this objectively, looking at what they do and why people would have some pushback. And that's going to be the case for all of these. Just trying to take a very stoic look at these brands and understanding you know, why do they get the hate they do. I think the first point and why Hublot is hated is it comes down to marketing. They are rather relentless and especially for a Swiss watch brand. I think a big reason for that is their marketing in Europe around a lot of major football leagues and clubs, most notably the Premier League. I see Hublot everywhere. I'm not a big follower of football uh, or soccer. Uh, but I do see it even in passing. I will see like some of the banners who blow. They've done all these limited editions for the Premier League and some of their players. Uh, so that seems to be something they're really tying into. They've also done a lot of celebrity uh, ambassador collaborations with Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Beyonce, uh, Usain Bolt, and Jay-Z, just to name a few. Whenever you're marketing really aggressively as a brand and just pushing things down people's throats, I think that sometimes is always gonna push people off. I think this is probably the least uh, likely of the reasons why they get the most hate, but certainly probably one of the things. They are everywhere if you are in looking at these certain pockets of where they decide to market, one of them being Premier League football. Now for the second reason why I think Hublo gets some hate is just because many of their watch designs are going to be too out there, ostentatious, and more just look at me in terms of their approach. Now I get it. I understand why people buy Hublot, and I think they absolutely have a place in the market, no question about it. And I think some of their watches are absolutely fine. Like I think the Classic Fusion looks cool, but there's no question about it. There are many watches that they create that just give off this crass, gaudy, and probably it's just going to be the antithesis of what people would say is classic traditional looks from a watch making perspective. And all these watches just kind of scream like, I just got a ton of money, I wanted to buy a watch, and I think really are just begging for attention, like look at me, look at me. These watches just have some of this undertone to them and I think that's part of the reason why they get a lot of pushback. It's more show than it is class. And now for the third reason why I think Hublot gets hate is just because they're expensive and you could argue that for what you can get from another brand, uh, probably not delivering the most amount of value. Now, when you're talking about luxury watches, value is not the name of the game. But when you do look around at the other things that are selling similar prices, you do have to, I think, think about what are you getting for your value of dollar? Even if you're spending 10 to $25,000 on a watch, I think that still crosses many people's minds. With their use of utilizing third-party movements in many of their watches and having price tags between 10 to $20,000 for some of those watches, it does make many call into question, what is the value that you're going to get? Some people are just not going to understand 
understand why you would get a Hublot when you could maybe get a JLC master control calendar for the same price or a perpetual from some leading brands out there that maybe lean into more of a classic watchmaking perspective. So despite Hublot, of course, having its own lane, and I think they absolutely have a space in the world of watchmaking, of course, being the 12th in turnover in the Swiss watchmaking industry is proof of that. I think though for enthusiasts that like traditional watchmaking, and there's quite a bit here with Hublot to potentially push back on. Now for our next most hated brand, we have Rolex, arguably the most important watch brand of all time and the most popular. And Rolex has just as a brand transcended the category of watchmaking being recognized by nearly any consumer regardless of their familiarity with watches as a category. Since Rolex is a private organization operated as a trust, exact numbers can only be speculated with 2021 appearing though to be Rolex's best year yet. Now eclipsing 8 billion in Swiss francs in revenue and making up around 28.8% of the total Swiss watchmaking market. Just to offer up an idea about how strong that percentage market share is, if you took the next five brands and combined them, Cartier, Omega, Longines, Patek Philippe, and AP, you still would get around the same percentage market share. So it has as much market share as the next five. So it is absolutely booming in terms of success. But with success does come pushback. And Rolex, I wouldn't say is as much hated as it is polarizing. So many people love Rolex, but also there are many people that with the success are going to hate the brand. And for Rolex, I have five reasons people might not like them. Now the first reason, and probably one of the main reasons why Rolex is going to get to hate and is going to have a couple other points that's going to stem off of it, is going to be availability, but not even availability, because I don't think that's the problem. I think it's lack of transparency that Rolex has when it comes to allocation of products, and especially when it comes to their steel sports lines. I think Rolex could eliminate a lot of the pushback when it came to their availability if they were just more open about what is their process for allocation, what is the process for ADs, and they had a more uniform way of going about this. I think many people could overlook some of the uh, just issues that come with their current retail model. Uh, but this is definitely one of the things. Many people that want these watches, I just have no idea how to acquire one. So to compound on top of lack of transparency about availability, you have the secondary market that you have certain models that are going three to four X retail uh, for things like the Daytona, as an example. The flipping culture has become pervasive in both the buying segment as well as the dealer segment. And also you're getting some intermingling with maybe some shady ADs out there uh, where they might be selling directly into to these gray market channels, which is never good and does lead to a lot of pushback, of course, and rightfully so. The number three reason why I think Rolex gets some hate as well is just that they almost play dumb and oblivious to the fact that any of this is going on. They don't necessarily talk about it. They made one final comment, I believe last year, towards the end of last year, and even at the end, it was kind of a say like, hey, like pointing the finger in other places, not really taking any accountability for it. Uh, there's no really voice when it comes to Rolex. If you look at their social media, they don't address any of this. They still market the same products. You look at billboards, they're still promoting the Daytona, the GMT Master II, which are great watches. I love these watches. Uh, but at the same time, there's just a lot of lack of uh, transparency about what is going on and they just are kind of hush hush about most things. I think most people want just an authentic voice for their products that they're looking to buy. But at the same time, I do think we have to be honest and say that this neutral and just hush hush approach that they have kind of adds some mystique. And I think is a reason why many people just have their eyes set on wanting to buy one of these for themselves. Point four, why Rolex gets some hate. I think I don't agree with this one as much, but I can definitely see where people are coming from. Uh, just given the fact that they're thriving so much as a business, why would they really need to push the envelope here? But it comes down to lack of innovation with new products. Now, certainly Rolex is playing it safe compared to many brands out there. But again, if you're succeeding so much, I also will push back on this one, but this is certainly something people bring up. And I think the reason why is because Rolex was the innovator of the 20th century when it came to watchmaking in many instances. And as things have transitioned in the 21st century, things have slowed down when it comes to their progression and trying things new. Look what they did for the 50 year anniversary of the Explorer II last year. Not truly much, even though it's a solid watch, a great watch at that. You can say that they really didn't put a lot of effort into creating something new. It really is just maintaining, which when you're dealing with a brand that has developed this level of market share, can you really fault them? Now for the fifth reason why Rolex gets some hate, I think it comes down to the people that decide to buy the watches. Rolex has become with their hype, uh, something that I think many people will say, hey, is this the classic rich person's watch? 
when you're somebody that has enough money, you wanna buy an exclusive watch, you just go for a Rolex. And it's become a brand when you see on somebody's wrist, it's almost an absinthe of creativity and individual thought, rather than just trying to figure out what is the next uh, conspicuous purchase uh, of consumption that I can go ahead and put forth and wear on my wrist to show at everybody, look at me. That's how I think a lot of people feel uh, when it comes to some Rolex buyers. Not all, of course, there's plenty of enthusiasts that love Rolex, including myself, uh, but there's certainly a segment of the Rolex market, a good segment of it, that is exactly this. Now for our third brand that gets some hate, we have Panerai. So Panerai's history is distinctly Italian, with a name dating back to 1860, when watchmaker Giovanni Panerai opened a humble watch and clock store in the heart of Florence, Italy. Panerai is widely known for developing instruments and also watches for the Italian Navy, the Marina Militare, Maritime Commandos, and starting in the mid to late 1930s, serving as some of the most important brands in the early development of underwater timekeeping. Now, Panerai sees Italian Navy supply in the early 1970s, existing in obscurity until around 1993 when they introduced their watches to the civilian market. They caught the eye of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, propelling the brand to increase heights of popularity during the 2000s. Now, Panerai is now located within the Richemont Group since being acquired in 1997, and they have true legitimate icons when it comes to having some of the most recognizable silhouettes in all of watchmaking. But why are they hated? I have five points. The first one comes down to controversies and fakes. So there is a lot of talk in the past about the unclear language around in-house movements from Panerai, which caused some stirring. There also was a lot of controversy around a reference 203 that had these Angelus 240 movements that were technically new old stock. Somebody did some decoding and figured out that these were not new old stock watches or movements and create a big stir. You also had them sharing fake watches on their Instagram and just the whole fake uh, just subgenre of watches, it's just become a very tough thing to uh, determine unless you're really in the weeds. Panerai watches with their close case backs in many instances and just their sandwich style dial design, they're a bit more easy to fake or at least see a good fake compared to some other watch brands. Many brands have uh, had to deal with this now with a lot of these fakes getting better, but Panerai was one of the first and there's a lot of controversies when it came down to this with their Instagram social media presence and how they've handled this. The other one will just come down to World War II. They supplied watches to kind of the wrong side of history. I'll just leave it at that. I think we know what happened during World War II and just leave it there. Point number three is going to be changing norms and how Panerai did not change with the times and style. Panerai has stayed really closely to the watches that allowed them to ascend when the trend for bigger watches were, of course, a big thing. Now, you never want to remove yourself or turn away from what has gotten you to the point of success that you're currently in, and I think Panerai has certainly done that, but you also have to look at angles and ways that you can go ahead and proceed forward. And I think this is where Panerai has gotten a lot of flack from different collectors that love the brand, and also people that maybe have never looked at the brand and never will just because they just don't feel that the brand uh, designs have evolved in any way since their success. Point four, the brand has way too many SKUs for specific models and then also make questionable design decisions when dealing with their dive watch history. We're looking at things with a dive watch case with 30 meters of water resistance, having very confusing reference numbers that makes it hard for people to get into, and simply just being rather tone deaf when it comes to some of their offerings. And then for the fifth reason why I believe they get some hate, is they turn their back or at least don't, don't seem to take into account their biggest advocates. Panaristis and people that love Panerai are some of the hugest proponents of any brand that you're going to find. They are essentially almost a cult. If you love Panerai, you let people know that you love Panerai. This is a phenomenal thing to have as a brand. You, everybody wants this. But I think what Panerai has done is they've tried to be too much for everyone rather than really focusing on the people that have allowed them to rise and not evolving in any way. And I think many of the biggest proponents of Panerai feel that they are turning their back on the brand themselves and don't feel connected to the community that was created that so desperately loved the brand and wants to see it succeed. Of course, the good news is for Panerai that they have a defining uh, just characteristic and design that allows them to separate from the competition in their own way, but I do think these are five things that I just identify for reasons why people might not like them. And now for our last brand here, this might be one that international viewers might not be as familiar with, but being from the Midwestern United States, I hear about them all the time, and that is Shinola. 
So Shinola is a brand that has emerged in the last 10 or so years. Uh, the name comes from a shoe polish brand in the late 1800s. It was founded in 2011 by Fossil Group executives, and Shinola was initially focused around US-made watches, complete with Swiss-made movements. Now, the initial hype was strong, focusing on their position of repping Detroit, Michigan, one of the strong and storied manufacturing hubs in the United States, of course, being home to the automobile industry for those that are not from the United States. Now, Shinola has boutiques across the United States, especially across the Midwest. They make watches, leather goods, bike bicycles and they're pretty well established and they also are well established in Detroit having a hotel the Shinola Hotel employ 300 to 400 people in the metro area so they certainly have a strong footprint in not only Detroit but in the entire Midwestern United States so why are they hated I have three points here the first one comes down to the made in the USA conversation so this is a very tightly regulated term, made in the USA. Now we know Swiss made and uh, people have covered, and I've even mentioned in the past, so there are certainly loopholes in the Swiss made argument uh, or just to have that Swiss made stamp on the dial. You can make it happen much more lenient there than it is in the United States. To have a made in the USA stamp, uh, the FTC is going to monitor that like crazy, specifically stating that marketers and manufacturers that promote their products as made in the US must meet the all or virtually all standard. And from there, there are little exceptions. Shinola ran into some issues with this when it came to their strong, just a uh, USA proud, made in the USA type messaging. They have now switched over to uh, built in Detroit uh, and some different jargon that is not as highly regulated. You'll also see on their dials, it'll just say Detroit. And with their sourcing of different parts from overseas, uh, specifically the movements of sourcing that from Switzerland, this whole made in the USA conversation becomes a bit more complicated, of course. So now for the second reason why they get some hate, it comes down to the accused fake authenticity that many will claim that they have. With the strong connection to Detroit leaning and kind of piggybacking off of the city itself and being this former strong manufacturing hub that has since fallen on some harder times for parts of their industry and their housing market and things that were going on, there's always this language around the Midwest where I'm from and I hear it often as well being from Cleveland is like, you know, the comeback of the old manufacturing when these cities were booming. At the turn of the 20th century, cities like Detroit were as strong as any when it came to economic production. But with this strong language and people kind of romanticizing this idea of old industry, some will say that they're pandering in how they're approaching their uh, watchmaking and also their business as a whole. Now, to me, this is not as big of an issue because they do actually have uh, jobs that they've created in the Detroit area. They've done a lot of this even though maybe the messaging was a little bit inauthentic at the beginning. And then for the final point, point three, for the reason why they're hated, I think safe designs that borrow heavily from other established watch brands and also maybe not having the most price competitive models out there. So their popular watch was known as the Runwell. This was the first watch that I came into contact with when this was, um, this is one of their flagship models. Uh, typically retails around six, $700 for a quartz movement uh, powered watch. And compared to what you can get from a Swiss watch making perspective or from say micro brands and other brands out there, I think this just was probably seen as maybe being overpriced for what it was. I think Shinola, when it comes to a design perspective, does an amazing job. Uh, I, I think some of their watches are very tasteful, of course, being inspired from certain places, but not as much so. They have their new collection of dive watches that are automatics, just over $1,000 that I don't think actually look too bad at all. I think some of them are actually quite attractive. Uh, and when you come from this fossil group, I think that's one thing that they've always nailed is just understanding and having a pulse on what is tasteful at the time and what is trendy. I think Shinola follows that uh, path quite well. But value for dollar, I think you could argue that maybe not the best out there compared to some other brands. But all right, guys, that is my take looking at some of these brands that get quite a bit of hate. I don't like using the word hate, but people like negativity when it comes to YouTube, so you gotta give the people what they want. And I also do think this is an important conversation to have understanding human behavior, understanding how brands operate so that we can just better understand this uh, relationship between uh, brands, companies, and us as consumers. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. Also, we're, there's some other points that maybe I glossed over that 
you would consider as being another reason why these brands get specific amount of hate. Love to see a conversation down there. Since this is going to be more of a negative approach to some of these watch brands, I'm sure we're going to get some talking down in the comments. Also be sure to check out teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the new products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.